Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, yes, we are continuing our conversation this morning on the topic of Mr. Watson Duke, the political leader of the PDP and Assemblyman for uh, Roxborough Argyle. Now, joining us um, for this next half hour uh, to take us through and to give us, just give us a perspective on what's been going on because certainly there is so much to talk about with this new development. Um, we are being joined by Mr. Max James, who is a former assemblyman in the THA. Good morning and welcome. Good morning to you, Candice. Nice to be here. All right, great I to like, have you. I like your colors this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and hopefully, <laughs> listen to me, when I'm wearing um, yellow, I'm wearing, I'm representing Davies House for bishops, right? Okay. So just putting it out there. And so, I'm, I'm green, representing boards. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, um, before we get accused of, you know, just being a small bishopian club, I know some people like to accuse bishopians of that. Okay. Let's get into the topic of hand about Mr. Mr. Duke and his call for reconciliation. What do you make of it? Well, there are many places we can start. But let us just say Mr. D Mr. Duke is an anachronism. It is just what it is. His, his, his time, he's a spent um, shell, he's a spent arrow. And I think that um, Tobago has had its fill of him. And um, we want to move on to other things. And um, I suspect that um, that's it for him. He's politically finished. Um, uh, when I came into the studio, um, another commentator was saying, maybe he's going to have a Lazarus moment. Then I said, no, no, not a Lazarus moment because Lazarus was resurrected to good things. So let's be careful how we use that Lazarus moment. But I think um, in a serious way, um, I think that's it for it uh, for Mr. Duke. When you first heard the news, um, what were the thoughts that went through your head about this letter of let's, let's reconcile, let's make up, um, you know, I'm going to forgive you? It, I, was, I, was, I was flabbergasted. I, I really was taken aback or surprised. Um, it's, it's, it's just another of those crazy days uh, where he foisted himself upon the media. He came from Trinidad, came straight to this station. Um, my nephew interviewed him. He wanted to have his say. He wanted, to, he, he wanted um, acceptance. After you've done so much damage to the thing that you yourself started, and you started attacking the very thing that you started, because you couldn't just not get your way. Um, it was just um, unheard of. But with Mr. Duke, the things that you feel that you have not heard, you will hear. And the things that you believe that you should not hear, you will hear. So I think that the Tobago people ha have given up on him. He's failed his, the electorate, he's failed his constituency, and he has made um, um, crazy uh, political decisions. Now I think that when he, when he claimed that he formed the PDP and it was his party, I think it was the most in this, in genus of him. Let me frame that part of the discussion quite differently. Um, he, you remember him saying that it was his brother and a dog under a street, under a street light. light, yes, with um, a blue horn. Right, but I, I received this in my inbox this morning. Um, and it's a little bombshell because, you know, God doesn't do anything wrong and he has a good timing. I suspect that we might have, he might have gotten away with it had not the PDP disintegrated by his own um, actions. Let me explain. Now, he started something based on a lie. We did not know that. I certainly didn't um, know how the PDP started. It was started on a lie. So here's one of the founding members, so to speak. So let me just read it. It's very short, half a half a minute. The PDP began with a beautiful democratic process, but was registered with selfish intentions. It was a Sunday afternoon at the PSA compound Scarborough. Present were Mr. Duke, Mr. Caleb Phillip, 
Gary or Gary Boris, that's Natasha's father, Miss Nikita, Nikisha Pantin, and many others. The process was a fully democratic one. Mr. Duke did not emphasize. Mr. Duke did not choose the party's name, nor the symbol. Everything was put to a vote. The people chose the name and the symbol, and both were put to a vote, and the one with the most votes was the winner. The entire process was guided by the people on the floor, not Mr. Duke's democracy. It was when he was ready, so he, 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 was given the, he was given the opportunity to register the party, and he selflessly and clandestinely went secretly and registered the party in his name only. He used the people to get what he wanted, but did not get everyone involved in the registration process. Just as he used Farley Augustine to help him win the election, and then we saw the true Watson Duke spirit and so forth. So that is how the PDP really started. There's a founding member there, and Mr. Duke went behind against the will of the, of the people and registered the party secretly. And um, had this thing come out, we would not have known that is what actually took place. Mm. So he's claiming that, no, it's my party. I started my brother and a dog on the street light. So what was started on a lie, what was started uh, disingenuously, we are now getting the full story of how the PDP was really formed, um, quite unlike what we are seeing in the TPP today. So, And that's what interesting because we saw the last few days, he kept saying, Mr. Duke has been saying repeatedly that the ideas are all his for the party in terms of the mandate and um, the, the election promises were all his and he's the one that's full of the good ideas not and nothing good could happen without his ideas. Not at all. I was Mr. Duke's leader at one time in the PSC when I was the chairman of the Tobago branch here and the chairman of the Tobago section of Mr. Duke was a part of. He was never a good trade unionist. He cannot even write a clause in a collective agreement. Mr. Duke, the last collective agreement that was signed with Mr. Duke in Tobago, I wrote it for the doctors at the TRG. He did, he came up with the first vice president and signed it after I had done all the heavy lifting. So he doesn't know a thing. He is completely bereft of an understanding of these matters and political matters. He, he cannot act without guidance and he takes no guidance. That is why um, the PSA almost folded under him and that is why the PDP folded under him. He takes no advice. I was his advisor. I was the first advisor he took for the PSA when, the PSA, when he was a, um, a president of the PSA. And he took no advice. And I resigned. After I resigned, he said, I'll fire you. So that's how the guy operates. So he's not to be taken seriously. Um, I, 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 I hope that the Chief Secretary, I don't think he's, he's, he's unwise at all um, to even sit down with Mr. Duke to even consider any form of re, uh, reconciliation. I think Mr. Duke is an abysmal failure. Um, in fact, I saw him, he goes everywhere for, everywhere for recognition. He came to church on Saturday. I was there at Rock the Ville on Saturday with my wife and, and family. And he came in at the last half an hour. So everybody have to turn around and look at him. He came in there with his wife and his son, and I say, what a pity. And he's there clapping. I said, my God, he's clapping and he's singing. And I said, my God. So you know, like- um, <laughs> Did he not have a conversation with him? No, it is the second politician that I, I, I hid myself from. I won't say who's the first one. Um, I really don't want to meet him. I don't really want to shake his hand. Um, and I was hoping that he, he wouldn't use that opportunity on the Sabbath to make a scene. So I let him leave. When I was sure that he went into his car, I came outside because he is the kind who will, will create a scene. And the Sabbath day was not a time for creating such a scene. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so forgive me. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the kind of um, individual it is. Uh, not to be taken seriously. He's a, he's a, he believed in being grandiose and and um, making a scene, you know, to get recognition. He's, he's about self and not about the good things of life and not about good politics and so forth. I was given permission on the last occasion 
to call him a particular name, but I will refrain myself. Now is not a day. Today is what? Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Wednesday is not a day for kill sin. Now, what should we, how, how should, should people now feel about this, this, this olive ranch approach? Especially in light that all of this happened and in light of people not being pleased with the in the political fighting going on i mean and it's unfortunate that our news headlines has been so um so so captivated by you know whether or not mr augustine is against the prime minister or mr augustine is against mr duke i mean there, there's there's been a lot of animosity and um adversarial relationships all about so how should people view this this now this this olive branch approach in light of all of that well, there's no olive branch. I, I don't know why people are, are framing it as an olive branch. Mm. I think Mr. Duke is an agent of the PNM. It's either he's an agent of the PNM or he's an agent of the devil himself. Um, but there's no agency involved here at all whatsoever. Um, and in terms of characterizing the, the, our chief secretary as antagonistic, or, or having an antagonistic uh, um, relationship with the Prime Minister. It's the Prime Minister from Tobago who set this thing up. And I think the, the party, and I think Mr. Mr. Augustine would have responded splendidly. I, I don't think that if you, if you cut me, I will bleed. So to say that um, the Chief Secretary is I was having a, 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 a polemic type of relationship with uh, the Prime Minister is quite wrong. If again, if you pinch me, I'll scream. If, 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 you, if you cut me, I'll bleed. So the chief secretary had to respond. And he's human. And um, so the prime minister is who, who went against the constitution or he delayed the constitutional um, um, process of appointing a chief administrator. It is the prime minister that has not instructed to date his minister of finance to ensure that we get 6.9% of the, of the budget. Does the prime minister understand the board situation? Does the prime minister understand the um, um the, the airbridge situation what has he done what should to be good do then you take all of our gas and oil and this give us back four four cents or four dollars let's say four cents on the dollar so that so that um those are the true enemies and those are the people who will come back and say well let us reconcile and i've always been a secessionist because i knew from since a little child Growing up in Bell Garden, toting peas in the evening and planting and, and, and Edo's from Richmond and having to go to Bishop's High School early in the morning, getting up um, half past four, staying with the family prayers and then to catch the, trans the designated transportation. And to have to catch the half past four bus in the evening if you don't get it, depending on the time of the year you reach home in the night. And so we understand the struggle. So that the PNM has not done anything of any significant um, as a lasting legacy for Tobago. Others they would have fixed the air bridge. They would have fixed the boat situation and they would have fixed our telecommunications. They would have fixed the budget. Mm. They would have fixed the autonomy. And therefore, when those things don't occur, how dare, how dare anyone to say that the chief secretary is having an antagonistic relationship with the prime minister? It is the prime minister, his minister of finance, um, Shanfa Kojo, um, Webster Roy, they are the, cul the culprits. And I want to take the opportunity to ask Shamfa Kojo today and Aina Webster Roy today, can you please put on record that you will support a 6.9% um, for a budget to be, uh, for Tobago in the next month and a half or so? So I'm, I'm calling them out today. And I'm hoping others online who are watching also call out Shamfa Kojo. Let us see and hear where her heart is. Let us hear what Aina Webster Roy would have to say about a 6.9% budget for Tobago. Mm. So I'm taking this early opportunity for, for that discussion to take place uh, here in Tobago and by extension Trinidad so that we, we want to hear what our representatives will say. Will you support, I know Webster, will you support a 6.9% budget for Tobago? Sham for Kojo, will you support a 6.9% budget for Tobago? Uh, Keith Christopher Rowling, or Prime Minister, will you support is 6.9% budget for Tobago, even more. Because you know what? Kamala Pusebisesa, who is not a Tobagoonian, would have promised Ashwood Jack to double the budget. It means, therefore, by, by administrative fiat, the Prime Minister could do it. He only has to say, let us do it. We, we want the airbridge fixed. Mm -hmm. We want to have the port fixed to, 
through the international um, sta um, um, sta 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 station. Just as how he can take the decision to, 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 to do an airport. The sea bridge is critical, perhaps even more critical because the fees are cheaper. We have access, sea access to any part of the world. It is a shorter distance to Tobago than, Scarb than Port of Spain to any part of the world. And we want to live too. We want to enjoy those things that God has put there in our, our waters. We want to enjoy those things too. This is not a union, you know. You know what passes for union? I was flabbergasted to see on the so-called Independence Day that in terms of the mechanized unit of the defense force, you have a long-haul tractor and a backhoe. I have the pictures here. It's a long-haul base truck yeah. and a backhoe. A green backhoe and a green truck. And that's what passes for Tobago. We not, they're not even on Independence Day, where the Chief Secretary represents the President. And all they could send to Tobago is a backhoe and a long-haul base truck. It is really perplexing. There's nothing to be gained from this union. In fact, as I said, it's not a union. We were fused. The British took a decision, it was, and Tobago protested it. But who were there at the time to challenge the Crown? But they took a decision. So we were not unionized with Tobago of free will. That's what unionized means, of free will. We were fused. And we want to cut that. For me. Now, um, but the, so getting on. back to the conversation about now Mr. Duke. And um, we saw him yesterday in Roxborough trying to, uh, you know, make his presence known again. Because he, he expressed, he said that, you know, he is going to refocus his energies here in Tobago. Um, work towards building all the PDP, making sure the people of Tobago knows that the PDP is here to stay. Is there hope for Rock for um, Mr. Duke in Roxborough? Um, do you think that you know he he is uh, he is aware of what his people, uh, the residents of that area, are feeling about his representation? Roxborough is a rundown place. The people voted for you. He should have concentrated his, his efforts into bringing the Roxborough, Aga Island, Betsy Soap and people together so we could have um, better roads, we could have cooperatives being formed, we could have a return to business activity. In fact, he himself went to China and, uh, and Dubai and he, he came up when he saw my brother doing such a wonderful master plan for, for, for Scarborough. He said, I'll do one for Roxborough too on his own, without even the proper consultations. He left all of that dangling in front of everybody and went and wanted to be a mayor. The people voted for you for a particular purpose, not for you to leave here and go to Port of Spain, another demographic, another area of the country, a foreign area to you, notwithstanding he lives there, and so on. Uh, he, sh he, 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 he lost his way. He lost his mandate. He was greedy. He wanted, maybe he wanted to be prime minister. Um, the time for that may have come, but the point, of, the point of the matter is that he left all those things there and went elsewhere and then comes back and then said, um, you know, forgive me, um, I'll be a better person. And then you paint your head green. His head is either green or yellow. What kind of man is that? You, 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 you left here with your head sponged or well shaven and you came back with your head green. So what does that mean? What that tells you of the psyche of an, an individual is that? Then you say, I want to reconcile. But that thing, referring to the anchor, that cannot overhaul the PNM. And do then you, you think, want reconcile. Do you think the Chief Secretary should accept um, the offer for reconciliation and go into a meeting with Mr. Duke can hear him out? He will certainly lose me for, for starts. If the Chief Secretary does that, he will lose me. He lose a lot of people. He might lose everybody. It is not, it, the party, by the way, is not the chief secretary's party. He's only interim political leader. And even though he's political leader in the next few weeks or months, when the thing is really formed, it's still not his party. That, those are political decisions that have to be sanctioned by the rank and file. He has to be given a mandate. He cannot act on his own. And that's the democracy. That's the, the, uh, the bulwark, so to speak, of, uh, on what the uh, TPP has been formed and founded, uh, where you have significant political decisions 
to undertake, you have to have the blessings of the party, except you already have the mandate and you, you're taking a decision within the context of the mandate. But the Chief Secretary or Mr. Honorable Fali Augustine and the Executive, they don't have that mandate. So it's not even up for discussion. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, you know, just how, how should everybody or the people of Tobago now view this whole situation? Um, how should we view this development? And I'm just giving you about a minute because we have about yeah. a minute left um, yeah. before the show ends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I am calling Tobagonians to reject uh, Mr. Duke wrongly and soundly and overwhelmingly. And let us move on to better things. We have our harbor to discuss. We have our budget to discuss. We have autonomy issues to discuss. Uh, I think that we should focus on those things. The things that will now um, propel Tobago to true, true uh, um, independence and autonomy. Those are the things we should focus on. Now, a better economy, jobs for our children, um, education, scholarships, infrastructure development. Those are the things we uh, should focus on. And I think that that is what this executive um, council at present has been doing uh, splendidly. I think we want to good things. And I think that's what we in Tobago should, should, should um, prosecute and support this executive in making Tobago the best of the island in the in, 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 in the, the world. Yes, in the planet. All right, <laughs> the planet. Thank, you. <laughs> okay. thank you so much, Mr. James, for being on with us and giving us your perspective. Always appreciated here. You're most welcome, Candice. All right, viewers, and that's how we're going to wrap this morning's show. I want to thank you so much for viewing us. So have a safe and wonderful day. And don't forget you have brunch coming up at 10 o'clock. The energy fill the skies. I say thanks a favor to wake up and hear